Hi guys, my name is Borrodante, and today let's finally talk about the iPad Pro. So yeah, as I mentioned a few episodes ago, I did get the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, the 2017 version, so this is the generation 2. So in this video I'm gonna get an overall impression from working on this device for about a month now, I suppose. Obviously there's a ton of things to talk about, especially for me because this is my first Apple device ever. So yeah, this is not the whole thing, also we have a pen, right? This is a normal Apple pen, I just applied a black electric tape around it so it would be not as grossly elitist white. I don't know what's the thing with apple and white stuff. Also, this was the only version, the only color of it, that has an actual black frame around the screen. All the other versions, silver and golden, they have white frame, which is like... What? But anyway, these are all nuances. Let's talk about actually working on this thing. So first of all, the size of the display is pretty much fantastic. Like, I can't imagine iPad being any bigger. Like, it would actually start being uncomfortable. I already feel like I can't, like, take it out every moment, like when I'm in a subway or something. Obviously, because it's a pretty expensive device, I don't want to flash it around. But it's just, like, a bit too big. Like, it feels like... Like I'm actually taking out an actual workstation, you know, it's really big while being really light and everything So it's as big as truly mobile device can get I think the proportions of the display as you can see they're pretty unusual I believe it's a 4x3 which works awesomely much better than the whole 16x9 that all the PCs have everywhere This seems like much better proportions for actual work. I really love the way the whole system works the latest iOS version with all the gestures that lets me go back and forth between the apps really quickly with awesome gestures. Also, there's multitasking, so we can do, like, this kind of stuff or something, and actually look at a reference while we work here. It's awesome. So anyway, this is the kind of stuff you can see in any kind of review of iPad, whatever. So yeah, the main app I work with is obviously Procreate. Also, I just, again, you've seen this probably if you wanted to, but I just want to show this feature of multiple drag and drop. It's so cool that you can import files, like multiple files with this gesture feature. Really loving the whole mentality of the iOS interface, meaning it supports the actual gestures much better than Android does. Like, it actually takes advantage of the fact that this is a multi-touch screen and it doesn't just draw buttons for you to press on. There is a lot of gesture action going on, which is very tactile and awesome feeling. Like, you really feel like you're working with something very nice. And same goes for the actual Procreate app with all the gestures and everything. Like, it's really cool. So yeah, the performance is amazing. I can create 8K canvases which is amazing it's far from all desktop programs on windows can actually at all support more than i don't know 7k Painstorm Studio doesn't create canvases more than 7K, so the actual power of the hardware is fantastic. Like, there's definitely no concern in there. So that's on the tablet. Not a fan of this um, cover I have for it. It's like, it's an okay standard cover that's uh, like a, a very simple one. The angle of it is really low or really high. It's either for watching movies or for, I don't know, doing what? Leaning over it all the time? Whatever. You can work work on it like this. Mostly I use iPad on my lap, sitting on the couch or in a car or just on your knee because it's so light and it's just awesome working with it without a table at all. So that's for the iPad itself. Now for the pen and that's where I'm gonna start with the main thing that I have a problem with, which is I think not a lot of people mention. I guess not a lot of people actually have a problem with it, but the main downside of the Apple Pencil is the fact that it doesn't do anything when you hold over it, over the screen, like within the one centimeter, which is something I was expecting to get. As a user of Wacom for many years, tablets for Windows, they have this thing. In here, there's no reaction of the tablet to the pen when you're hovering, so it only draws when you actually make a contact with the screen. But it doesn't show you the cursor, and most people on forums usually say like, why would you need that? Why would you show the cursor at all? It feels unnatural. 
natural it feels much better to draw with that like with an actual pencil well guess what not all of us just draw some of us paint and I'm mostly a digital painter not a digital drawer I really need to know what shape of a stroke I'm gonna get right now because it may be really big or small I changed the brush size a lot and I have no idea what I'm gonna be drawing with the other way you can do it is just to touch very slightly and you actually like it has a very good drawing contact response like you can draw very slightly but there is amazingly still a moment where you can just touch and you can see this cursor like this and at the same time change the brush size so you can kind of see it like this but it's actually not very comfortable to touch your surface when you're not willing to draw the moment you just want to see what the size will be I don't know it's weird you really need to see the cursor when you're hovering and it's technologically impossible with Apple pen it doesn't do it so that's my biggest concern with the hardware on the Apple pencil another thing yeah it doesn't have the side buttons but you can deal with that because of the other very cool advantage of iPad Pro is that you can actually draw and touch somewhere else at the same time so as you can see right now I'm drawing with a pencil and at the same time changing the brush size with my thumb of the left hand which is something that is technologically impossible on Android so it's really cool it's really smart with the touch and also as you can see I'm touching the screen with my palm as much as I want this is black magic how it can just completely ignore my palm while actually like controlling even the same hand can pick up the color and everything ignoring the palm and working with my fingers like this it's really fantastic like such a good algorithm of working with it I was actually hating it for about a week at least and then I actually realized that I have to take off my drawing glove do not use this with an iPad the two finger drawing glove it works much better when it's easier so yeah, that's pretty much my main and probably only concern with the actual iPad plus Apple Pencil combination overall, like not even touching the whole software question. The fact that the tablet doesn't react to the pen at all when it's hovering, it's a big bummer. It's not a problem at all if you're just drawing, sketching with tiny lines. It's a big problem when you need to detail with changing the size of the brush a lot. It's just not gonna work. I eventually I just notice that I struggle to get into actual hardcore detailing because I just constantly keep on drawing with the same brush size because I just don't want to handle the whole question of changing the brush size because it's so like I don't know what's happening I can't see it I can see the brush size it's annoying obviously something to get used to but there's a limit to that like even after a while it's still like yeah I'd very much rather see the brush size all the time so yeah the software right away procreate obviously the number one choice it works amazingly it's really fast it's always 120 frames per second the brushes the brush engine is fantastic although it does have some limitations comparing to like Photoshop inspired engines that we have mostly on desktop it has a fantastic control of color plus blending and stuff like that it has really cool work with the uh, texture even though there's not a lot of modes of blending the texture into the stroke but the ones that are here are pretty much everything you need surprisingly really cool support of the tilt it really like the the form factor of the pan really allows you to tilt it a lot and it does work on that giant angle it's fantastic with that to save time I'm just gonna say that it's pretty much an amazing brush engine very powerful it has almost everything you need but and now I'm gonna talk about what's missing one thing that's missing is the second mode of opacity opacity and transparency usually there are two modes of transparency and opacity in Photoshop or Paintstorm Studio or other programs in here you're either have one or another like usually you have this kind of flow opacity something that you call flow in Photoshop right so this is flow you can see that every copy of the pattern of the brush gets transparent so you have this foggy smeary effect of the brush and another mode is glazed this one when you can like work with the layers so this is what you call a opacity and the top one is what you call flow in Photoshop and in Photoshop you can use those two parameters together at the same time and it's actually
actually adding quite a lot of extra features like I do like the benefit of uh, being able to like you know paint in a certain limit of opacity at a certain point and then add another silhouette on top without releasing the pen and at the same time not just paint with these kind of like flat strokes but also have this foggy effect on top this is why Photoshop brushes have a lot of freedom in how exactly it acts in the stroke because of those combinations of two different opacities, transparencies, flows, whatever. But generally, if you forget about it, it's not that big of a deal. Like, this is a really good brush as it is, you know? And another one limitation that's left that I feel like I could be using as well is the actual digital blending. It's not present here. It's something close to what Photoshop mixer brush has but this one is actually usable meaning it does have not exactly the blending but like smearing it can be really strong and pretty looking but not as actually useful as the actual averaging blending this thing always blends in the direction of the stroke imitating the real paint for some reason who needs that all the software always tries to imitate the actual paint but yeah you can't really average the strokes if i would want to like blend this edge of the sweater right here to have a gradual color gradient kind of like this you know so it would fade away you see i'm doing first the perpendicular strokes and then blending together like it works like this really well for blending but with the stroke along the edge it doesn't do anything because it's just smearing along the stroke not very useful as a digital blender at all so that's one thing that it's kind of missing but again i never really relied on blending all that much having just a little bit of blending in the stroke the way i had in this brush initially like it just kind of have the blending effect but generally it doesn't really affect the whole process all that much just so the strokes that i put on top wouldn't feel like these digital dry overlays you know so it would feel like there's some moisture going on underneath the stroke as well slightly remove the details underneath it it's really good for that so that's how I use it very lightly a little bit to have a nice effect to it or sometimes making it really strong and insane kind of messy brush just to search the concept or something and as you can see no matter what's the size of the brush procreate never lags this is amazing I have no idea what kind of optimization is going on underneath that metal graphic API that they're using but it's again some kind of black magic going on it's really smart about it if you'll use a very highly dense brush steps like right now the highest brush size is this which is really big if I'll actually show the actual size of the canvas so this is about the size this is the size of the brush this is really giant and real time but if i like decrease the spacing from 5.6 to none like the, the highest probably 0.1 percent this is the biggest size of the brush it won't let me make it bigger because in that case it will start lagging and it knows about it so procreate doesn't allow me to even make the brush bigger so yeah really a huge amount of features but just these two that i mentioned would be really cool to have the two modes of transparency at the same time in one brush and the actual averaging digital blending which is I'm gonna show right now in Paintstorm Studio which is a good moment to switch to another piece of software Paintstorm Studio is just like in Windows which is something that I love about it it's just the same way plus it has all these buttons right here to quickly have like the color picker or anything <clears throat> any moment now as you can see i cannot use it at all because it's lagging beyond possible like i don't know what size of the brush i should be using for it to not lag like insanely yeah so this is the brush i'm only using the bristle mode because without bristle mode it gets even worse like right now you can see it's pretty much real time but as i get just a little bit bigger it's 
getting completely unusable like it's so not optimized that it's like broken lagging it's super lagging i think this is something close to what i was talking about when i was first trying paintstorm studio on windows and then in about a month they updated it to paintstorm studio 2 where they actually used gpu engine and it became faster than photoshop and now it's my favorite app on Windows. Hopefully this will happen on iOS as well, because right now this is a very pretty unusable toy. So that's pretty much it. So about the whole blending thing that I wanted to show, the thing that is lacking in Procreate. So right now I'm gonna just remove the color amount to make it just a pure blender. And right now I'm making a stroke along the line and you see it's actually averaging perfectly. It doesn't work in the direction of the stroke, although it is an option in here as well. Extend color, I'm also using it, but mostly the blur. When it's not very strong, it's actually blurring like this, just a strong blurring tool in a way. But as you're making it stronger and stronger, it gets like this, like almost pure averaging, but still with a certain gradient from left to right. And at 100%, it's actually a pure averaging blender so this is a very common way blenders work in programs and it's very useful you can very quickly create very convenient gradients everywhere and that's something you can't do in procreate at the moment so I'm hoping they will change that and also another advantage of Painstorm studio is the fact that the whole interface is just constantly present on the screen like the display is giant I don't need to have these super tiny crazy mobile kind of interface like what for there's so much empty space on the sides actually show the colored rectangle right here don't make it a pop-up window what's up with that and this is actually a huge deal because a lot of the times the way i usually shade anything the way i render is i create just color spots of an object like this then i grab the color from the screen by holding the color picker button and clicking and then i need the color wheel on the screen to lower the brightness and increase the saturation maybe make it colder a little bit and that's how i add the shadow you know then i color pick and blend around but eventually i'm gonna need to make the shadow even sharper so i'm gonna make the same thing even stronger so i constantly use the color wheel to introduce new stages of contrast to the painting as I progress in the shading and it's just so annoying that it's this one click away at the very edge of the screen all the time really a bummer that I have to click all the time same with the like layers why would we not have an option to actually have it on the screen all the time again really hoping that this is the kind of thing that will adjust to the new and big and powerful iPad Pro form factor and everything so we'll actually have the constantly present interface on the screen the way Paintstorm Studio has. So there's a bunch of other programs. Affinity Photo is uh, something that everyone is waiting so much for me to review all the time. I don't have it on Windows. I do have it on iOS now. And it's an amazing replacement for Photoshop, for real full-blown Photoshop of Windows or Mac OS on iOS. It's really powerful with all kinds of tools I'm not gonna go through all of them I haven't gone through all of them myself yet and yeah we have an option of keeping the interface on the screen although one at a time apparently also it's using this weirdest kind of triangle for the color just just use rectangle it makes sense to use rectangle it's not just a shape it has a vertical and horizontal directions that are easy to orient in what am I gonna do with this nonsense some interstellar stuff, why? But yeah, this is still better than not having anything at all on the screen. Yeah, it has amazing selection tools with the whole... When you're just selecting something, then you press a button with the radius and it's actually picking out every single hair, as if I have any, of an object. And you can actually have the semi-transparent sub-pixel selection to separate a person from the background or anything like that. Healing tools, everything, like really hardcore stuff. They have everything. Pretty much an amazing, perfect powerful clone of Photoshop. And yeah, they do have brushes, but, um, well, let's stick to Procreate, pretty much, because this, uh, this is, uh, this is okay. It's also really fast, by the way. <laughs> the sizes of the brush are insane. 
So yeah, again, it's really powerful and with the whole effects and filtering and everything in here, it's very usable, like a really good replacement for Photoshop. Maybe even much better in many cases, but don't quote me on that because I haven't really tried this program all that much. So yeah, another program that I haven't mentioned at all so far is Infinite Painter, which also has perfect kind of blending that Procreate lacks, but surprisingly being the best program on Android for painting with a whole lot of tools and like perspective grids and all kinds of shapes. This is something that Procreate lacks as well. Like these are really powerful tools for very hardcore precise drawing and painting. It just works so much worse on iOS. I think it came to iOS a lot later. So it's really not that optimized. You can see even navigating like moving the canvas around is laggy and the brush strokes they're not exactly lagging from the size this is the biggest size by the way but yeah again this is not a giant brush it does have visible steps and everything and you can see that the frame rate of it is not just slow but it's also not constant which really shows that the whole thing is just not optimized it's not stable also the color picking when you pick the color it just sometimes struggles to disappear it like takes half a second to disappear for the color picker and after a little while of picking around the colors and painting it crashed on me like it really needs more work it is an awesome program so far procreate is the best but it has few of these limitations with the interface and the fact that you can't really blend properly and have the double transparency control so yeah that's my brief overview of software on this device there's also clip studio paint let me just launch it to satisfy some of the hardcore fans of clip studio paint as you can see I tried it around a little bit set up the interface but this is really weird changing the brush size with the actually pressing but the main benefit of this program would be I'm saying would be because I'm not really using it I really have to dig into the whole brush engine but I don't think it's as powerful as what procreate has generally although it does have the averaging blending right here the main benefit for me for the workflow is one other thing that really lacks in procreate actually is customizable hotkeys for the physical keyboard so you can connect your Bluetooth keyboard to iPad which is connected right now so I can color pick with alt so that's good <laughs> in any case in clip studio paint while it being a clone of the desktop version I suppose as well in here we have the shortcut settings and we have the whole thing customizable which is fantastic if you actually set things up the way you are used to you probably won't feel a lot of the difference from working on a desktop computer and in procreate all we have is just the a list of shortcuts that we can use like we can learn but we can't change them which is kind of a bummer so usually I just use it for like these two buttons for changing the brush size and alt for picking up color so pretty much replacing this bar right here that's changing the brush size and in the middle I'm tapping to grab the color with the pen it's kind of awesome to have it working simultaneously with the pen this whole thing you know but after after a while when you're really again in actual hardcore work you can't feel it like it's just colors on the screen eventually you your finger just wanders away and you miss the button and it's so annoying and distracting so yeah using the keyboard instead of this side right here is a really good option when you are like at home actually working of course this whole bar is an amazing replacement for it when you're on the go it's really good for what it is but yeah keyboard is definitely something you can use to very much improve your speed of work really feels great to work with a keyboard on the iPad. It, it would be just so good to have the customizable hotkeys. The brush engine generally, I would pretty much stick to what it is. Like, as it is, it's close to perfect. But having a constant presence of the interface is really needed, I think. And the customizable hotkeys. These two things are super important. And yeah, hopefully May 27th, I have it written down, Apple is having their next 
presentation thing and everyone expects them to introduce new versions of the iPad Pro and maybe even the new version of the Apple Pen. Everyone has a huge amount of expectations for what is gonna mean the update for the Apple Pen but for me of course the best thing for it would be to support the hovering cursor appearance. That's like the only thing I need from it. Everything else is totally fine for me. Like of course you have to charge it, of course you have no place to put it at all, you can so easily lose it, not to mention this stupid cap that you can lose everywhere as well. So yeah, this is what I have to say about the iPad Pro. Comparing to the Galaxy Tab S3 from Samsung that I've been using about a month ago, this one is way more powerful. The size is really like, I feel no limitations at all. Mobile or not mobile, it's just perfect as it is, just the size of the canvas. So it's amazing and Galaxy Tab S3 is 9.7 inch, which is the smallest size of iPad Pro. They have that size as well, but this one is pretty much 13 inch, 12.9, and it's much better. <laughs> the Wacom Pen has a side button that you can make work for your own purposes. If you do some operations with uh, removing the bloatware of Samsung, there's good pressure sensitivity, there's some tilt sensitivity, but it's like ridiculous. It has such a fat end at the tip that you can't really tilt it enough. No problem like that, obviously, on the Apple Pencil. It supports a giant angle of tilt, which is fantastic. And yeah, of course, uh, being a Wacom technology, Tab S3's pen supports the hovering cursor. So that's the biggest advantage of Tab S3 comparing to iPad. And among other many advantages of iPad, the main advantage of iPad is the software. It's just so much better. It's much more professional and powerful. There are a few of actual like perfect clones of desktop programs on iPad. What do we have? The Paintstorm Studio, Clip Studio Paint, and Affinity Photo. Three programs that are perfectly cloning themselves from desktop to iPad, which is a really cool trend if you ask me. So yeah, I guess that's about it for my impression from iPad Pro. I try to use it as much as I can, every time, everywhere. I work in it, as you can see. This was detailed purely on iPad. This stuff, like you can see, I haven't gone too much into details yet because I am still struggling with the whole inability to see the size of the brush. So it's kind of like, hopefully I'll adjust. Free painting that I've done just for myself, but they are also like not super detailed, but this is the way I wanted them to be. Yeah, this was an awesome experience. Let me show you. Like, you may have seen this on Instagram, I actually uploaded it. But yeah, like, the brushes really feel amazing, they create really cool texture, they're very controllable generally, and the speed of work is really cool, there is absolutely no lag. Like, the stroke always perfectly follows your pen, this is actually kind of new. I don't think I've ever experienced such a perfect synchronization. So there's that, we'll keep working on this iPad Pro 2017, we'll see what Apple will bring us on March 27th in their presentation, but yeah, for now this is it. Some downsides, a lot of advantages, hopefully it will be totally usable for me for all kinds of work in the nearest future, but yeah. Tell me guys what you think, tell me about your experience, if you're actually not just drawing and coloring, but you're actually painting. Do you feel like it's a problem that you don't see the size of the brush? Did you manage to adjust to it? Or tell me about any kind of experience you have if you have iPad Pro. But for now, this is it. And I thank you for watching if you did, I guess I did if you're here. Leave a like and subscribe, tell a friend, ask me to share my brushes again, do whatever you want. And I will see you in the next one, bye! Also, how cool is this?